Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Boss Rush Podcast, a great place to play games and be better. I am one of your hosts, Corey Deering, and alongside me tonight, no Laron. No Laron. He's, he's... That means I get to go next. Yeah. But don't worry. Every, the, the one you love is here. The mad pharmacist herself, Stephanie Klebov. Hello. Here. Yeah. yeah. Laron's off uh, picking up his boy toy from a long winded absence so yeah he's, getting, he's, he's reuniting it's a very touching moment i almost wanted to say congratulations but i'm like i don't think that's what people do <laughs> uh speaking of laron he just texted me he said cory stop talking shop with the guests while we're live <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> you know what like, laron? i can see you guys <laughs> you're not here laron you're not here we do what we want <laughs> Anyways, I'm excited uh, for our guest tonight. He is a fellow guardian. He uh, is a content creator, a photographer. Andre Wilson is here. Hello, good sir. Hello, hello. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be here. This is my first podcast, so excuse me if I if I don't know what to do with my hands. That's fine. Nobody knows what to do with their hands. No. Okay, let's be fair. I'm glad I'm not alone in this boat because I'm nope. always like, do nope. I what? <laughs> yep. So, uh, Andre, we, you, you listened to my Destiny show, Tower Casuals, but I wanted to have you on because uh, we've just been talking back and forth, and I think that you are an interesting person. Tell people what you do on the internet. So, on the interweb, I, um, okay, so I'll start with Instagram. Instagram, um, I, I have recently picked up photography. Um, I'm very new, so I'm kind of just getting into the, the workshop. I'm basically like the new kid at school, and I'm kind of just trying to figure out where I fit in and where I can be like, hey, nice hat, cool shoes, and just kind of figuring out my, uh, my terms here. Um, I've kind of always had, a little passion for um for for photography some inspirations are um when i was younger peter parker spider-man obviously um and then a few content creators i follow they just uh just um it's a i personally find that you can take a simple camera and take a simple picture and like turn it into art I, that just it's a uh, it's really fascinating and i'm 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 always trying to learn new things, so I will I'll pick up hobbies that are very difficult, and I like to challenge myself and get better and better and better. And the way that I kind of see Instagram is <clears throat> is um it's almost like a an adventure or journey of 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 my progression. So like at the start, I'm not good. Obviously, I'll make mistakes, but later on, as I get better and better, I can scroll back. And be like, holy cow! I've come so far in my passion, and it's really cool to see the growth that I've been having lately. And um, I'm excited to see where that can go eventually. Um, other than that, I um, I stream. I haven't streamed for a while, only because I've I've um, I've taken a bit of a break just to focus more on photography and kind of like I just felt like full time work streaming trying to do photography fitness because i do go, i um i do go t to the gym i'd say i try and go f if i could seven days a week but i try and cut it down to like four um so that and then being a father all of that is really taxing so i i thought to myself i'm like how can i cut this down so the gym i uh the gym i try and do like maybe like three two times a week depending on my schedule photography kind of just on like the side randomly if i feel like going for a walk i'll take pictures and then work and then streaming i've taken a little i've taken a little bit of a break but i am gonna start that back up i also took a break because i want to change some things and kind of um make mix some things up excuse me um the ever uh the the ever-changing tinkering of the stream. Oh, gee, I am. I, I, I need the award for the for, for the the biggest tinkerer because I will, I will walk into my bedroom and I would be like, that picture needs to be on that wall. And the next day, I'm like that picture, and I will, I will rearrange a room in a week. It's terrible. I hate it. It's like a gift and a curse. It's not the best thing, but it is the best thing. <clears throat> Other than that, um, Instagram, Twitter. I have Twitter, and Twitter, Twitter is very. 
very clicky. Like Twitter, I think it's very hard to kind of like find out where you can really say anything without re- without pissing off like half the world. <laughs> So it's just it's so hard, but I try and just stick to like Destiny content, uh, photography, uh, people that inspire me, uh, positive positive stuff. Um, again, trying to just find my way around that. Other than the internet, um, I work full time, father of two, and in the fitness. As I talked about the gym, I've been going to the gym. I want to say like seven years now. All right, then um, I have a question for you, Andre. Yes. As me. a fitness person, because mm-hmm. Corey knows my ailments, have you ever had bursitis? <laughs> oh, God. Sorry. Birth? What? Birth. Birth. <laughs> bursitis. bursitis. It's like this. This is this has been a thing on the show for about, what, a month now? It's like this, <laughs> this, this liquid sack on your elbow that you get when you work out. The visual for any audio listeners, Corey's just like pulling at the extra skin of his elbow. Yeah. I don't think I've ever... No, I can't say they ever have that. Okay. No, I um, I'm a, I, I'm quick. I'm a I'm a runner, but to cross train, you know, I I've started pole fitness, which is my way of strength training because I get mm. ADD and bored at the gym, gym. Um, and I don't know, no direct trauma, but all of a sudden one day I got bursitis, and I had it <laughs> described on the show. And they're like, "What's a bursitis?" I'm like. <laughs> All right, here's my medical hat. Bursa is this fluid-filled sac that surrounds your joints and gets inflamed. And I read that, you know, it's really only old people that get it or people that suffer, like, a traumatic injury. And mm-hmm. Apparently, that just means I'm old. Did you fall off the pole? Is that what you yeah, did? Not on my elbow. I've fallen on other things, but not my elbow. So, so I was like, all right, this guy's done fitness. Maybe he has his fair share of injuries. Um, I have to applaud you, first of all, <laughs> Stephanie, because I, um, so I started to do, no, was it, yeah, I think it was two years ago, I got into more cardio, and at first I'm like, I'm like, five minute run, I'm like, easy, and then after five minutes, I was like, <gasps> okay, so then I kind of yeah. like, took a step back, and I was like, maybe I should rethink this whole cardio thing, I still do enjoy it, but I did not realize that the right shoe for running is key, because I'm like, I'll just throw in Vans, go for a quick 5K run. Easy. No, do not run with Vans on. I'm telling you this <laughs> right now. Get Ooh. the right shoe. Like, I went out, I think, a week after. I went out and bought, like, Under Armour, like, um, memory foam shoes. They were expensive, yes, but I do not care. You get major. For anyone that can see, your shins will 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 cry if you do not yes. have right. It is terrible. So eventually, I got myself up to um, doing a 15k run, and I think about like an hour and a half. That was like the best I've ever done. I plan to do it hopefully again this summer um, when the weather is a lot nicer. Other than that, yeah, I've been going to gym for I'd say about like seven years, and I'm I'm the same way, Stephanie. I have ADD, and it's been it used to be a problem when I was a child, but now I kind of see it as like a superpower. And I mean, like, there you go. the gym for me, it, I think it changed my whole life because I mean, like, it taught me, res- uh, taught me um, to stick to a good schedule. It taught, it taught me discipline. Um, it, it just like, like all the, all the energy I had having ADD, I didn't know where to do it. I walked to a gym, I lifted heavy shit for like an hour, I walked out and I felt great and I'm like, I am not stopping this and I haven't since for seven seven years now. Yeah. It's almost kind of like an addiction, but it one, is, of the, one of the better addictions out it there. It is. I don't care what anyone says, the gym is an addiction and I will die on that hill. No. I'll die, I mean, I'll die on that I, hill. Any kind of exercise, like for me, and it's because I started off as a runner. Sorry, Corey, we'll actually get off of exercise in a minute, but um, it's, it's fine. I I need to run, exercise. Is what I need to do since <laughs> since high school, like regularly, like four or five times a week since high school. So mm-hmm. now, if I go probably more than two full days of cardio. I will get a sort of withdrawal feeling, not the, oh, I'm going to get fat if I don't run. No, like I'll get the shakes, like I'll get like all messed up and like it just, it's like a drug addiction if I don't do my workouts regularly. No, I feel you like, like if I don't go to the gym 
for like one day, I'm like, great, I'm fat. And my my fiance is like, shut up. I'm like, no, I'm fat. That's it. But like, it's just it's it's almost like not going to the gym when it's a what's when it is an addiction is almost like not buying a coffee in the morning for anyone that buys coffee. It's like not having your keys on you. It's just something about your day is so off and it feels weird. And then when you go back the next day, you you walk in and you're just like, oh God, thank you. And yeah, it's just it's a it's a great it's a great thing. And I highly suggest if anyone is like suffering, especially suffering like mental health like that. Yes. The gym, I cannot stress enough, will help you. And like even if it doesn't completely help you the gym and the amount of friends I've made at the gym. I mean, like the gym d- does more than like make you look better. It makes you feel better. It makes you look better. It makes you think better. It changes your life. I could sit here for f- f- five hours and talk about it, but I won't. But it's just go to the gym. That's it. Go to the gym. To I need this to. message is brought to you by <laughs> Under Armour. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. The, I mean, so I I went to the doctor this this week for like the first time in a long time, like eight ish years, and uh, I have to lose weight. But that was like the only takeaway from the doctor, and it's like, well, I gotta get this knee fixed, and we'll be good to go. Although, speaking of my knee, so I. I heard this thing where, like, if you if you sit with your wallet in your back pocket, it, like, creates unbalanced posture or something. And so, like, okay. today, today, I tried it at work today. And today was the first time my knee did not feel like it was going to s- just break off. Anytime I go out with, like, friends, family, my fiancé... I take my wallet out of my back pocket and I put my phone, my wallet on the table. I do not sit on my wallet because I have felt like just sitting on the wallet. Because if you sit, then like it's just like thing jab. It, yeah, I, I I totally get what you mean. My suggestion: take it out on the table. Yeah, that's what I did, and I I I, I felt better mm-hmm. today. It was really strange, Good. but uh. Now, of course, it kind of hurts, but that's because this chair is uneven and broken and all other things. But, uh, all right, before we get into the main show, uh, we have some Patreon producers to shout out. Remember, if you subscribe to the Boss Rush Network on Patreon for just a dollar, you get the Boss Rush podcast on audio feeds one week early. Nintendo Power Block expansion pass one week early. Standard definition two weeks early. And... Boss Rush After Dark two weeks early for just a dollar. But if you subscribe at the $5 tier, you become a Patreon producer. What does that mean? Woo! You get your name Woo-hoo. shouted out on this here podcast, hey, among yo. others. So, our Patreon producers for this episode are Quentin Jackson, Rebecca Jewell, Adrielle Munger, and my wife, Sonna Derrick. I want to thank everyone. Let's, <laughs> let's be honest. Everyone loves getting their name shouted out. I let's be honest. They do. Let's, let's be, I don't care how old, how old you are. There's nothing cooler than hearing your name being shouted out. And you're like, that's me. That's all me right there. I know. I did that. I gave money <laughs> I, and my name I, was said. I did that. That's <laughs> uh, I want to thank all of our patrons. Uh, and I want to listen to, uh, I want to thank our uh, free feed listeners. Remember, all of our content is free. We just provide a little bit of extra perks for you over on Patreon. So, uh, Andre, you are our esteemed guest. Yes, sir. What are you playing or watching or doing with your life? <clears throat> so, okay, I'll start with... Uh, I'll, I'll give you all three. First, I'll start with doing. Um, doing at the moment, nothing really exciting. Uh, trying to get better at photography. Um, I'm just trying to think. Like, yeah, that's basically it. Um, looking forward to Friday because it's a short week. So there's that. Um, hoping the weather is a lot nicer here in Vancouver so I can actually go out and enjoy it. Um, watching. Oh, God. Okay. I just finished Moon Knight. 
right. that was a that was uh that was one hell of a show. Let me tell you. I don't I I was taken back at the fact that Oscar Isaac can switch his per spoiler alert, if anyone has not seen it, I will give you five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to talk about Moon Knight. If you haven't seen it, stop this. Go watch it. Come back. Action. I am shocked at the fact that Oscar Isaac was able to talk as one person and not have an accent and then in the snap of a finger, talk as the other guy with an accent. That that truly blew me away. It was incredible to see his acting. And I didn't like... So I only knew him prior as uh, Poe Dameron in Star Wars. Um, and I, I thought he was great there. But I just didn't expect him to, like, up that in Moon Knight. So that was that was super cool. Um, I recently watched the first season of Love, Death, and Robots. <gasps> yes? And, and, okay. And, and um, there is a couple episodes that live rent-free in my head right now, and I can't get them to leave. <laughs> Um, okay, so, 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 since, okay, so you might know Stephanie, uh, Sony's Edge. I don't remember, like, the title, because I've seen it a long time ago. Can okay. you give me, like, the, hi- the premise of it? That's the one about the girl and the monster, and she's actually the monster. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, so, man. yeah, so that was the first one my friend showed me, and they were like, if this doesn't get you into it, nothing yeah. will. And I watched it, and I was like, rerun that we're going and I, and and we watched the entire thing and i was like that that for me i was like that's like s tier that was so good and then another one that lives rent free in my head is um it's it's called beyond the aquila reef it's the one where um the ship is going home but they take a shortcut and they basically get trapped in this like arachnid web for like hundreds of years yeah, but he doesn't know, and then, like, yeah, so that one, for me, really yeah. just, like, twisted with my head, and after I watched it, I was like, I was like, wait, what? And I had to almost rewatch it again, and I was like, this has so much meaning. I was like, oh, my God. So then I went and Googled it, and I was like, this has so much more meaning. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, some of that stuff's brilliant, and, it, like, a lot of the episodes just, like, they mess, they, they fuck with your head, but in a good oh, way. It, it, it and it was crazy too for the animation for what twenty what was it two thousand and four twenty fourteen for how for how old it was the animation was way ahead of its time, way yeah. ahead of its. Oh, time. It was sure. so good, yeah. So other than those two, um, uh, yeah, those two are like the ones that re- all of them were really good, but those two like really stuck out. Um, other than that, besides what I'm watching, I mean, we have Kenobi on Friday. I know, I'm so I, excited for that. <laughs> my 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 entire being as a as a Star Wars fan cannot wait to watch that show. I am I am so I okay, I should have said this at the at the start. I am a huge Star Wars fan. I have a Star Wars sleeve. I have a nice. I have I have many Star Wars collectibles that it's not even funny like if i put them all out my room it looked like you walked into like a 12 year old's room um i am a huge star wars fan i have been since forever the the pinnacle of my star wars life is i got to meet carrie fisher before she passed away really and it was probably the most epic moment of my life she came to fan expo and fan expo is a it's like a vancouver version of comic-con uh-huh. And like each year, they've had like really cool people. Like one year, I met I met Stan Lee before he passed away. Um, I got wow. to meet um, the guy who plays Yondu. Um, oh, okay. So I don't know his name, but I because he's yeah. also The Walking Dead and the, yeah, like... him, Merle, Merle. Um, what's his name? I can't remember his name. Um, I got to meet Maggie from The Walking Dead as well. Um. I got to just see like a whole bunch of people. Like I don't know if you guys are anime fans, but I got to meet the guys who voice Goku and Vegeta. I got to meet the lady who voices Ash. I got to meet. <gasps> Co- yeah, yeah, she was cool. I got to meet the guy who voices Officer Prime, Peter Cullen, and then one year Carrie Fisher came here, and like all my friends are like, "Yo, you have to go." And I was like, "Okay." So I bought tickets. Um, I 
I bought a Princess Leia pop figure, and I walked in that day, and her 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 signing was at like like noon or something. So I get there ten, I'm walking around, and then at eleven thirty she comes out to like prep and all that, and I'm standing there, and I'm like I'm like holy shit, I'm like that, I'm like that, I'm like that's Carrie Fisher right there. So twelve o'clock, I walk up, I give her my pop figure to sign. And I, I, I didn't really know what to say. I was like, I, I almost thought that I would just like <laughs> blur about words. I was like, I am such a big fan. I'm like, I don't really know what else to say. I almost wanted to say you're Carrie Fisher, but obviously she'd be like, yes, I am. <laughs> but I was just, I was, I was just like, this moment for me is so big. And then we ended up taking a picture, and um, I think that was like 2014. And the pop figure that I have is actually still in the box, and it's signed by her. And it's it's been it's been like that ever since. And it's 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 it, it was the best moment of my life as a Star Wars fan. So. Wow, she she's a legend. And was, just a side note, that's gonna be worth a lot. <laughs> I know, I know. And I like part of me has thought like, I wonder how much I could sell this for. And then the rest of me is like, no, I can't. You, never, you yeah. can't. You no. can't get rid of no. that man. Yeah, I know. My goal is to somehow, I don't know if I'll we'll ever do this, but somehow meet Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford and get them to sign it and have all three of them. But I don't know if we'll ever make that happen. So, Yeah, okay. Uh, Mark, Mark, what, Hamill, Mark Hamill goes to stuff like that, though. If he ever came to Vancouver, I would probably hunt him down. Like, <laughs> Harrison, listen, you have to... Harrison Ford would probably just tell you to fuck off. But <laughs> yeah, Harrison yeah. Ford, Harrison Ford would stare at me, and I'd be like, "Who shot first? Haha. <laughs> and then he'd give me the middle finger and walk away because that's Harrison Ford. Mark Hamill would probably I'd I'd either bring like a Joker Funko or a Luke one. But yeah. Um. Anyway, back to Love, Death, and Robots first season starting the second one soon. Uh, Kenobi on Friday. Other than that, um, I'm not really watching anything besides anime. Um, game wise, God, uh, Destiny as of ye- yesterday. Uh, what do you think of that first sa- mission? Oh my God, it was scary. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, like oh, this is like freaking me out. It yeah, it was like, worse than like. It was worse than the presage mission, like that I, first yeah. time you enter presage and you think yeah. something's chasing you. That entire first time you play that mission. Yes, yeah. And then for me, what got me is when like is when you walk into the room and like it's the giant callus robot and he's like, <laughs> yeah. And then like his his eyes go. I was like, oh my god. Oh my god. I, know. I know. And then like and then you, you turn around and your grenade won't work. And you're shooting, and then Eris is like running. And I'm like, oh god! We're yeah. Like, oh god. And then like you're like freaking out because you have to punch. Yeah, it it does the presage mechanic where you have to punch the mushroom and you have to run through the door. But like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. I don't well, know. well, I so when I start, I switched to solar because I'm like, oh, I want to try out the new solar stuff. Oh, yeah. So so this first oh, mission, yeah, yeah. so this first mission, I'm gonna throw on solar and throw some hammers and do whatever, right? Yeah. Oh, but sure. when I went to punch the mushroom to run through the door. I kept throwing hammers at it, and it wouldn't punch the mushroom. And th- that wow, big, wizard. like, wow, yeah, the big, like, haunted cabal guy with the with oh, the giant yeah. swords, like, came yeah. up and straight up just murdered me. I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, oh. Basically, but yeah, so far, I mean, solar is solar is so much fun to just make things explode. Yeah. Oh God, I cannot tell you the amount of times I was like, <laughs> oh. the new armor this season looks cool too. It does, Both dude. The uh, the Reaper set. Oh god. Yeah. So. Yeah. Other than Destiny, <laughs> I, um, I'm Stephanie's really like. Enjoying... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying hearing the passion. It's all right. It's all good. There's a lot. There's there's a lot of passion, but some hate because <laughs> every it's game. Destiny. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Destiny. It's Destiny. It's Destiny. But if I'm not playing Destiny, I'm playing Cyberpunk, which I'm really getting into. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think. Cyberpunk. I tried Apex. Couldn't. I just couldn't. I couldn't. I tried so hard. Um, tried Fortnite for a bit. That was fun because they had Star Wars stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I thought when the when the it, they put like all the Star Wars skins and then the doc they dropped the Multiverse of Madness skins too. I know. I, 
<laughs> I was just like, bye, bye. I bought the Stormtrooper one, and yeah. then I just, I did, I played nothing but the Stormtrooper. And then I even, because in the Star Wars event, they had the E11 um, gun for the uh-huh. Stormtrooper. So I would, I would only use that. And the best thing is the accuracy. The accuracy on that gun sucks. So like you'd be shooting and, and like it go like right over and around everyone. Mm-hmm. But I would still use it just because I'm a stormtrooper and I would die and I'd be like, this is okay. I accept yeah. this because I'm a stormtrooper, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I um, uh, I I bought the the Wanda skin. I bought the Ray and oh, Finn God. skins, and I bought oh, <laughs> I yeah, bought the yeah. Master Chief and the Gears skins. So I bought. I mean, I, I was I was I laughed when you and Josh were talking and Josh um, Josh couldn't. Josh missed the Halo skin, and then you told him about it, and he was like, "Damn it! I have to go buy that." <laughs> I laughed at that part. I was like, "Oh, I was like, oh, poor Josh, because he he just bought Moon Knight, and then he's buying Master Chief, and now he's buying this." <laughs> I know. Um, other than that, yeah, those are like uh, I I switched between Destiny and Cyberpunk, but um, other other than that, um, I'm kind of waiting for for some games here like uh harry potter I'm waiting oh yeah mm-hmm. oh harry potter's gonna be so cool i'm so excited um, what house are you just need to know on on pottermore i am hufflepuff i have a pin that nice. always reminds me on so on pottermore i'm 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 hufflepuff but in my heart i'm uh i'm i want to be gryffindor but i think i nope. think everybody wants to be a gryffindor yeah. I actually, well, sorry, not me. My friend went to Disneyland and she actually brought me back a replica of Snape's wand. Oh. I, yeah, because, so recently, I say probably, when did I finish them? Um, I'm an, I am an audiobook buff. I have like 35 audiobooks on my app and I actually recently finished the entire Harry Potter saga and then I, and then I nice. really, I re I re listened to the last book because I just loved the last book so much. But that entire saga, let me tell you, I was sleeping on it. It is so good, so good. It is very good. Let's see, I, I still haven't done the Pottermore. I think I stopped because I had to like sign up for another account. I'm like, I'm sick and tired of signing up for accounts. But I've done other quizzes, mm-hmm. and it says I'm Ravenclaw, which I would have deemed myself a Ravenclaw. So I'm like, all right, I I, I can dig it. Uh, I'm also a Ravenclaw, but I would have said I'm a Hufflepuff because I'm just kind of exist. <laughs> Nobody cares. Yeah, like my my house is Hufflepuff, and then my Patronus I think is a Garden Snake. A Garden Snake? Yeah. Aww. Mine is some sort of stallion. Ooh, okay. Is that also in Pottermore, or can mm-hmm. I take like a non-Pottermore quiz? Because I think I took no, one and said I was like some sort of terrier. I'm like, I want a cooler animal than that. Uh, no, that was, my pot- that was my Pottermore. I think Patronus. Pottermore is like the official one. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I also have a 14-inch brown softwood wand. With... I don't remember my wand. That's the, only, that's the only thing. I don't remember my wand. Yeah, All right. Maybe I'll have to do that, but... Corey and I were bouncing around an idea for like, you know, of the future of what we want to do for Boss Rush. And um, one of them is, you know, we don't usually do um, play alongs or stuff like that yet because, you know, we have to mm. consider capacity or like a book club version of going through po- uh, video games. But if we were to do one and we're planning ahead, we want to talk through our experience as we go through Hogwarts Legacy. Like that's mm-hmm. on our wish list to do. Yeah. Really want to do that. We're gonna do it. I don't care if we have to consolidate, or I will. I will cancel three <laughs> shows to do that. I don't care. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't really want to cancel anything else, but it's fine. We'll <laughs> uh, it's cool. Uh, nice. Stephanie. Oh, sorry. I have one more question oh, for Andre. Questions. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, because you mentioned cyberpunk. Because when everything first happened. Um, I thought the concept was cool. I'm like, this might be my next like big game to tackle. And then obviously mm-hmm. I heard about all the bugs. I'm like, all right, I'll just wait on it. And then just overall, given how much time has passed and I didn't have any current or next gen consoles at the time when mm-hmm. everything was fixed and cleaned up. So, but now I have my PS5, my Xbox series X or whatever with the bugs cleaned up. Like, is it a, is it really a good game worth trying? 
So for me, I was I was super skeptical. Like I saw it on sale in Steam for I think it was like eight, I think it was like eighty, and then it was on sale for like forty. So I like I I googled stuff, I YouTube stuff, I went on Reddit, Twitter. I was like, if I'm gonna buy this game, I need to know that it's okay. Right. So I like I. I asked around. Some people said yeah. Some people said they don't care. Some people said no. And I'm like, at the end of the day, it is my choice to play it. So I went ahead and bit the bullet and I bought the game. And I gotta say, I've had no issues whatsoever. Yeah. I personally think after everything that happened with that game, after the overhaul, it is worth trying at least. And at the end of the day, if it's not a game for you then that is your choice and that's completely fair me personally i enjoy it i like it um i mean now that everything's fixed it's it's pretty much the game we all wanted it to be okay in the beginning yeah i i played it when it came out on xbox series x i played the xbox one version i didn't have any issues with it some but, people didn't yeah but some people did yeah it sure. It actually seemed like when the game came out, if you were playing it on console, the Xbox One version on Xbox Series X was, like, the best way to play it if you are going to play it on console. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it was fine. I know they added a lot of stuff. I know they changed some things. I know they added a bunch of stuff for free since then. But I enjoyed You do my get time free stuff. Yeah. Because I, you get, like, you get a couple jackets. You get a Witcher-themed jacket and shirt. You get a katana. I think you get a car as well. Yeah. 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 I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I enjoyed my time with it. I kind of want to like, part of me wants to go back and play it again, but I'm I like, no, I'm not going to. But part of me is like. Well, the, there is three stories you can play. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Stephanie, what are you doing with your life? want to guess <laughs> besides writing your novel <laughs> which i only have a week left before my self-imposed deadline i know getting it done you gotta get those well, words because out of those that horrible weekend i just had I, I did fall behind but we'll see but so basically andre so i'm writing my fifth novel and i just couldn't handle everything at once so i put a hiatus like i put a very strict disciplinary rule of myself no video games until my novel is finished because i feel like that would motivate me like i want to get back to my games so no i have not been playing anything however after this weekend i plan on hopping right back into it i don't care if i'm done or not so no i did see um dr strange multiverse of madness again yesterday because uh, i've seen it twice can we talk about it yes we can okay all right Spo spoilers people that, spoiler alert spoiler alert yeah just um, you know, fast forward like Five minutes. Come, but come back though. <laughs> yeah, Corey, have you seen it? I haven't, but I know what happens. I don't really care if you talk about it. I know everything that happens because I'm part. Of my job at work. I'm a I'm a media and content manager at work, and like sixty percent of my day is spending time on Twitter. And I'm not. I don't mute any oh, words okay, or anything. So you... And then, and then, like once I get spoiled, I like go through the rabbit hole and like, oh, well, let's You're watch all like, the breakdown. I want it all. Yeah, how much information can I consume without actually watching the movie? Yeah, basically. Okay, what was your? How do you feel about it, Stephanie? Because I, I like it, but at the same time, I have like, I'm like, I don't know how, how like, I don't know if it's no way, like, no way home, good or like better. Hmm. That I don't know about the comparisons, but yeah, at first I, I wasn't sure how I felt about it because it's very chaotic and just seemed to go everywhere. But I guess very. that's the point. That's why it's called Multiverse <laughs> of Multiverse Madness. Of Hold on, Stephanie, you haven't seen Spider-Man yet, right? Not No Way Home, no. Oh, okay. 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 I, I just wanted to make sure be before like we dive into this to make sure we avoid the spider-man story element no, it's okay because that's i'm usually very caught up with marvel stuff but ever since the second wave i've kind of been very slow to catch up and mm -hmm. unfortunately that latest spider-man movie is one i i'm still unfortunately i just fell behind i have every intention of watching it but if i didn't see this doctor strange movie i'm just gonna never catch up so i just made my own decision to bite the bullet and just go see this one so i can at least kind of 
stay as up to speed as possible with every intention of going to of go, um, of watching um, No Way Home. Is that, is that the one? No um, Way Home is amazing. I lost my voice the first time I watched it in theaters. Wow. But yeah, oh. so and I kind of talk with people like, how much do I really need to know for this movie? And I felt like I, I was fine without it, but I, I'm still going to see it. But um, I got to say the, the graphics were stunning. Like they mm, did- oh yeah, graphically this movie was was amazing. Like I've said this to all my friends, I'm like the creepiest part of the film was when she crawled out of the gong. Like yes, I I remember out loud in theaters. I was like, what am I watching right like, now? Oh. I was like, oh god. Oh yeah, did you notice that this movie definitely took a more darker tone? Like people were mm-hmm. fucking cut in half. Yeah, and- that's the Sam Raimi stuff though. Oh yeah. yeah. This- Sam Raimi just said, "Look, we're taking the, the the friendly the friendly movie thing out the window, boys." Like he, he, he was like he was like, "What movie am I known for?" Oh, Evil yeah. Dead. Okay. He full sent this into like, I go as far to say borderline rated R. I yeah yeah I heard some people say they were surprised it wasn't rated R. Borderline rated R because I because there's some shit in this film that I'm like. Wow! That like, just happened in front of me. like when uh, Black Bolt's head implodes, like that was yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that then... like for me, like I can handle. But like for example, I mean, my my kid hasn't gotten into it yet. My kid is six, but I know kids around his age are into Marvel superheroes, mm-hmm. and it's not even coming from a prudish. I'm a prude parent standpoint. It's more like if my kid saw this movie, he'd probably have fucking night terrors. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So doesn't bother me like for me i think it's a fresh new twist on it but i was just surprised because i'm used to the more kid-friendly flavor of marvel Mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing that and and i'm not trying to pick on the movie too much because i just want to be fair because i would just genuinely gush about it is there are some parts of the movie that were just very on the nose very very on the nose about certain things um with you know driving the point home i don't know like the, the, the girl, America, which I thought was a great character. But, like, her name's America. She's wearing, like, an American jacket. She had the star on the back, and her powers had the star on it. And they were very, very on the nose about... If Have you seen the What If TV series? No, and that's one thing I kicked myself in the butt for. Like, I didn't see that prior to this. Okay, so if we're talking about shit we haven't seen, I haven't seen Loki yet. I haven't seen... Um, you Hawkeye. wouldn't. You went into this not watching What If or Loki. I feel yeah, like. Yeah. I feel like that those are like the two you should watch. I, before I this know, movie. and everyone says that. Everyone's like, Especially I'm Loki. Loki. I know, I know, but like you, like I've, I know, I, I, I basically know like what yeah. happens in it, but, yeah. but, but it's, it's the. I know what's gonna happen in the long run, but I can still enjoy the ride. Yeah. Type of yeah. Situation. It's cool. Like the, it's, Go ahead, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, it's cool because, like, uh, Reed Richards uses the same technology that they use in Loki, and that's, like, a big connection. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. yeah. If like, I had seen Loki, I would have. Like when, like, when he appears through, like, the blue portal or yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. yeah, that's how they that's how they travel through dimensions in the TSA and Loki. Oh, the star thing? The blue star it's stuff? Like, it's like this blue, like, when he appears in the Illuminati room. Oh, okay. It's yeah. like his entrance. He, like, yeah. kind of like, whoop. By the way, I'm all for John Krasinski playing Reed Richards. I screamed yeah. when he yeah. when he was like, hello, Dr. Strange. I was like, ah, Dr. Krasinski! Yeah. But then he got unraveled like a uh, Twizzlers. Okay, yeah. So, so, right there, that whole fight... That's probably my biggest gripe about the film is that is the fact that they that all of them just got their asses kicked so fast and we didn't get to see their powers. That's one thing I hate about the film. Yeah, I would love to see like Reed like do Fantastic Four shit. I would mm-hmm. love, love to see Black Bolt at least like try before try. he gets, before he gets off. I would love to see more of like Carter kind of just do stuff before she just gets like a half off sale and then like. Captain Marvel, like we've seen her, so I just didn't like how how three of them just got like yeeted off. Killed, uh, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. And, then <laughs> and then and then Professor X gets his neck snapped. Dude, that scared I sh- me. Shocked, screamed out loud. I was like, huh? Ah! Yeah, uh. like like when 
Well, it was creepy too, like how the gas and like I was like, oh god, oh god, oh god, and then and then when she's reached like, Kia, I'm like, oh, I didn't expect him to get that like that. I was, oh my god. Oh, uh, I thought he was gonna get shredded like uh, in Last Stand when uh, Phoenix oh, like shreds him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but apparently, apparently, this Captain Carter is not the same Captain Carter that's in What If. It's a different version. So unbelievable. So, different version? I mean like it kind of seems similar ish. Well, it, it's like a, a different universe. Oh uh, well. So. But yeah, there's that, oh, okay. but then um that even though it's not the same thing, but there you know, there was a zombie version of Doctor Strange in the movie and there was an episode about zombies. I know it's not the same thing, but it's like yeah. there had to be a nod towards that. Mm-hmm. There was also a brief zomba uh, zombie Wanda. So yeah. if you if you can freeze it or rewatch oh, yeah. it again, it's when it's when the gas is coming towards Xavier, excuse me, and she reaches out to snap his neck. If you can like quickly mm. pause it, she's zombified. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So so like that's you know there's two two zombies in this film. So I just feel like this movie set up a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It this is definitely this definitely seems like a setup movie where like. People might not like it now, but the things it's set up is going to be important later, and this movie will be better later, if that makes sense. And I think that is exactly why, for me, I don't know how I feel about it, because Mm -hmm. it's a set-up film. And I don't don't think we've had many set-up films. Like, the last film we had was No Way Home, and that was an ending one, and it was huge. And now now we get a set-up film where Mm -hmm. it's like... We we're all hanging off a cliff, and it's like well, I don't know how to feel about it. But like you said, down the road, when the doors open from this m- movie, it's like this movie will be bigger. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I it's, it's... oh, I was Go just gonna ahead, say I freaked out when I saw the yellow chair for Professor X, though. Oh my god! Oh yeah. Did you? Did you catch the subtle X Men? Yes, though? yes, I did. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. When I oh. saw that chair, I was like, "Oh, my childhood!" I know. In a frame. I know. <laughs> and the fact that X Men '97 is coming out soon. Oh. Yeah, I'm like, does this mean that we'll get like yellow suit X Men or sorry, yellow suit Wolverine? Like, I mean, yeah. I, look, Marvel. I'm still waiting for yellow suit. Skin tight Wolverine, okay? Mm-hmm. Give it to me before I pass away on this earth. I need it in my life, or I'll never be. <laughs> I'll, 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 I could never move on to the afterlife if I physically don't see a motion picture skin tight yellow suit Wolverine with him saying "thub." I just, I, I, I need that in my life. Like, I don't care who like it is. Like this one. Yes. Like yes. This one? <gasps> yes. Yes. I need that in a movie, or or I can never be content. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it gives me a lot to look forward to. Um, like, I never really finished my on the nose thing, but it's okay. I don't want to psychoanalyze it too much. Like, I loved um, America's character arc. Like, I don't know if she's going to eventually have her own movie or at least participate in future movies because she has a pretty freaking amazing power. Oh, and yeah. I love that she was able, like, because she doesn't know what happened to her parents. I doubt mm-hmm. they'll do it, but, like, I'd love for her to have a movie to, like, go to different universes and find her parents. Her parents. That'd yeah. be so cool. Well, you know what this is going to set up? It's gonna, it's setting up Secret Wars. She's going to be the key to Secret Wars, I bet, in this version. Oh, don't say that, because then Marvel will hear you. Oh, that'd be so cool. No, because, I mean, because, like, that revolves around, like, taking what's left of each universe in the multiverse and making it one universe, right? So, like... And we... And we have had scrolls in the, in like in the MCU, so it's only a ma- like a matter of time mm-hmm. before. I mean, we're getting. I mean, we're getting Secret Invasion. We're getting. That's what I'm thinking of. Sorry, Secret Invasion. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I mean, a Secret Invasion and Armor Wars and all these other things are gonna, you know, it, it's Secret. Secret Wars is coming. Secret Wars is coming. I can hear Josh screaming from a mile away, but it's <laughs> fine. I can't wait for that podcast where he's like, it's here, it's here. And you're like, ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, but yeah, I I like the elements of this movie. I hope certain things from this movie happen. Like there's a rumored uh, Captain Carter TV show coming for Disney+. Plus. There's a, I mean, 
I hope John Krasinski is Reed Richards. I swear. I mean, like, I don't know how long he's wanted that role for, but I think it's been years. Well, you know, remember when COVID hit and he started that, like, weird YouTube show that he did for a while? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. In, 20, yeah. in 2020, in like, in, like, May of 2020, he said, wouldn't it be cool if I was a Marvel superhero? And, that, like, because he was talking about the fan-made Fantastic Four uh, poster. Mm-hmm. And... Then he ends up becoming Reed Richards, and it's like, oh my gosh, dude, this is. Yeah, also, he's. He, the... I, I don't... Oh, sorry. He's the only character in that whole pantheon of the Illuminati who hasn't shown up as that character in one way or another in the MCU already, or in right. some in some not necessarily MCU. because the Ms. Marvel was the best friend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Carter was the girlfriend. Yeah. From what if? Well, she. I mean, what if who? too? She's. <laughs> Oh the yeah, guy. the I already forgot his name. Black the guy Bolt, with the on his head. Black, Black Bolt, Bolt, that Inhumans <laughs> TV show Florida that man. only got one season. He was he played Black Bolt in the Inhuman show that only got one season. Oh, okay. oh, that's where he's okay. And then uh, who's the other one? Obviously, oh, Patrick Stewart. Yeah, Patrick Stewart, obviously Professor X. So mm-hmm. and then Mordor, who was previously in Doctor Strange one. So yeah. That, yeah, that's right. He hasn't really gotten the spotlight yet. Yeah. So, and we know there's a Fantastic Four mo- movie coming. Uh, Listen, if if you guys give us this read as John, and then give us a Fantastic Four movie, and it's not John, it's an L. I don't care what yeah. you say; yeah. it's an L. It, 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 it's automatically an L. That's it. Yeah. Because they already opened the door. It's like yeah. he was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't. You can't give us this and be yeah. like, just kidding. It's Bob, and we're like, I don't care about Bob. I want. I want yeah. John. Yeah. Um, I will say, so, um, Scarlet, which she made a great quote unquote villain for the movie. I just think it's a, you know, great motive, so to speak. Very Mm -hmm. freaky. Mm -hmm. Um, I did not, I mean, I get it. I did not like the weird third eyeball Doctor Strange gets at the end. I can't, it's just so creepy. I don't like it. Weird, weird. And I'm, I'm, I still think it's weird. Weird. I, I, he, it better not be there the entire third movie because I'm not going to watch it I think for it, only that reason. <laughs> I think it. I think it only appears when he has a vision or something. I'm not. I'm not the I, biggest Doctor Strange person, but I'm pretty sure like when he's doing his thing, that's the only time it appears. I had to Google it why he got it, and I and I didn't get it was because he 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 did the whole dream walking mm-hmm. thing. Walking thing, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Also. Lady at the end literally had to Google her. I'm like, I have no idea who she Charlie is. Charlie Theron's character? Yeah. She's... I was like, I was like, who is this lady? I, I no Isn't she playing Dormammu's daughter or something weird? She is, um... Uh, Clay? Clea? Clea, yeah. Clea. And she's like Doctor Strange's wife and successor. And I'm like, what? When did you get a wife? Hmm. <laughs> um, but still, she was a better, like... In new character intro than the Eternals. Did you both see it? Eternals? Oh gosh, dude. Eternals I is haven't. Bad. I haven't yet. Is it okay if I mention who shows up in the post-credit oh, yeah. scene? Go ahead. Oh crap! I forgot. To, I intentionally block out his name. It's... Harry Styles. Yeah. What the, what the hell? As he's he's Star Fox. He's oh. Thanos's adopted brother or something. Harry Styles actually? Yeah. Thanos's. Ad- I guess adopted part makes sense, but Harry's. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe I was traumatized. Because He's not purple working... either. He's. I was working at a pharmacy at CVS when there was a One Direction concert years ago. When I had to see and experience all those crazy tweens going nuts over <laughs> those boys, and here he is just walking in like a cool Marvel superhero. I'm like, no. You also, not cool also Pat Oswalt as like the weird little goat person. Right. <laughs> Sorry. I just. I Char- thank you, Charlize Theron. Like she's much better. She's much this. cooler. <laughs> yes. She and she's badass as hell. Yeah. Charlize Theron is a is a queen for every female out there who doesn't think they're badass. Charlize Theron holds the crown. Let me yes. tell you. Yeah. So. Oh, man. <clears throat> I'm. Uh. I mean, what's next? What's next for MCU? Miss Marvel, I guess, right? In June? Well, June isn't, 8th? But isn't also Love and Thunder? Thor, Love and Thunder? Uh, yeah. oh, July. 
Have you guys seen the new trailer? Yeah, I watched it today. How do you feel about it? I... Um, okay, so I read the comics for Gore. Have you guys? No. Homie was a savage. He 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 killed all the gods, all of them. The okay, so it was basically like a graphic novel, uh-huh. and basically when he got the sword. He was just like, F this, all the guys are dead. Mm-hmm. And then and then eventually at some point in the comics, <clears throat> past Thor, old Thor, and future Thor had to work together to kill him. So there's three Thors in one book. There was like an old old guy with like an axe and like one arm and like a hook, I think. I could be wrong. Um current Thor who was like their bravado and ha ha, I'm Thor Odinson. And then like future Thor, who, who was like, look, we got to do this or we're all effed. Yeah. And they basically all put their heads together and thored it out with Gore. And Gore was just basically like the almighty God of like gods. Cause he killed every other God. Mm-hmm. And it was just, it was a crazy, um, mature, um, comic. And I don't know if they're going to go that route. I mean, Christian Bale looks like Voldemort. So God, it's yeah. Kind of weird. That was the first thought. Um, I was like, I was like, I, did I'm I like, click on the wrong trailer? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> um, all jokes aside, though, he he looks cool. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, I mean, Jane Foster as Thor. I'm excited to see her kind of buff some ass. And I mean, Thor, Chris Hemsworth, uh, Chris Hemsworth as Thor is always funny. Yeah. So I'm excited. So it's... I have a question because I, I don't I have not read the Thor comic books. Where where does female Thor come from? So I the okay so the only Thor comics I have read are the Gore ones. I have heard that female Thor Jane basically and I could be wrong. So if anyone wants to comment when this goes live and correct me, please do. I heard. That in the comics, Jane gets diagnosed with cancer. Mm-hmm. The only way she survives is if she becomes female Thor. Yeah. And then and then she just basically stays like that. Yeah. So again, if I'm wrong, correct me because I, I, I don't I'm just No, she she gets breast ca- she gets breast cancer and that, yeah, breast cancer, her yeah, life yeah. is prolonged by becoming Thor. Yeah, okay there. Alright, so I have a question. And this is coming from as a female, okay? Mm-hmm. I sometimes get, a, I just don't really get why there needs to be an exact female version of a male superhero. Mm-hmm. Not that I don't want there to be female superheroes, but I'm like, if you're going to have a female superhero, can she just be her own superhero? Doesn't have to be like female Thor, Fe- she, Hulk. Can it just be like, uh, just. But so I, I'm, I don't want to sound like I'm anti-woman hero because I'm a female and no. I love badasses. But you know what I'm saying? Like, why does it have? To, why does mm-hmm. Jane who gets breast cancer have to be she Thor? It feels like a, just... it feels like a late. It feels like a lazy idea. Like just make like yeah. ca- like Captain Marvel is a good example of like that's that's a cool female superhero, right? Thank you. Yeah, so like she's I... not like Lady Captain Marvel. Or sorry, sorry. Um, I'm thinking of Captain. Carter. America. Like she's yeah. not Lady Yeah, thank you. She's not like Lady Captain America. She's just she's just Captain Carter or Captain America. Yeah. Right. Alright, sorry. I just yeah. I don't know. It just it kinda gets it, it it's a little irritating for me, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I get it. It's it's uh I like when they have unique ideas and not just like, oh well here like like the one of the new shows coming out is Ironheart and it's just a female Iron Man. Right. Don't get me so, started on. Don't get me started on that show. On R- on Riri Williams. Like I'm she's still hurt that Tony Stark died. She's but like I she's a cool character, but hurt. like it's you're just bringing Iron Man back. You just like, you just want to make yeah. more cool toys to sell to people. Uh, you know. So I don't know. I I'm the one I'm most interested to see what they do with those Black Panther. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that I don't know how they're gonna do it, but it's gonna be really interesting. I mean, the, the two rumors right now are Shir, uh, Shiri or Mbaku are gonna become. The next Shiri one. would be cool to see. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is a um, run of comics where she does become Black Panther. 
because I think she, T'Challa I think goes she missing. And then M'Baku should be like her like right hand man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But. Yeah. There's also a deep fake going around of uh, Idris Alba <laughs> as uh, Black Panther, and they just deep faked his face over uh, Chadwick Boseman. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. It doesn't look much different. To be honest, but also, you can't you can't recast Chadwick Boseman at this point. No, no. I mean, I already know they said they weren't going to, but even if they were thinking about it, so. Uh, well, that was a fun discussion. Yeah, loved it. Yeah, uh, I finally feel like I'm getting. I I think Doctor Strange, uh, Multiverse of Madness, finally reinvigorated me. With, with the Marvel Universe again, because I am one of those people that did get Marvel fatigue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, after after Endgame, I was like, man, that was a lot. I am I need a break. I and... think after No Way Home, I was like, okay, yeah. I'm cool for a bit. And I think that's why I didn't like jump on like the Loki and like uh-huh. the Black Widow and the Hawkmoon. Like all those shows, I was like, look, like I've had my... Hawkmoon. Look, I've gone through a giant war. I'm I'm okay for a bit. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I, uh, I, it, I mean, I didn't even start watching the TV series. The only reason why we started watching WandaVision is because my wife wanted to watch it, and she grew up on like the old kind of fifties and sixties sitcoms, and she thought it looked oh, really yeah. interesting. I enjoyed that show though. It was uh, good. Like, it's I, my favorite. It's my favorite of the Marvel shows still to this day. Yeah, like I kind of went into it like, okay, I'll give this a shot because again, I heard so much about it, and I was like, all right, cool. And like episode three, I'm like, sign me up. Where are we going? The fifties, I'm there. Yeah. Right. So it was, it, and like it got progressively, progressively better. So that's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. 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 That was uh, it was really cool. Also, like the first hint at like the multiverse almost, where like Quicksilver from the X Men movie showed up, but wasn't really Quicksilver, but was it? Now? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know now. And I feel like, I feel like WandaVision was for watching the multiverse of madness oh yeah like you didn't need to watch okay well you could have watched every other tv show but wandavision was like you needed to see wandavision prior to this mm-hmm. film yeah yeah 100 percent agreed if you did not watch wandavision you probably would have been lost mm-hmm. did they even do did they do a good job of even like explaining it at all i think gave like a, a like a one or two liner about what happened so i feel that People yeah, might um, thought they just might not appreciate it as much. Right. What do you think? Where did they I think it's when Strange went to go see her in her yep. like cold acreage and she's like, I made mistake No was it prior? There was some someone told Strange that she took over no the town, yeah. Yeah, I think it was Oh, okay, so it was the acreage where she's like, I made mistakes, I messed up. Blah blah blah. We we fast forward when she's attacking, and Wong ye- uh, Wong yells out, "She took over an entire city with her mind." So, yep. so strengthen your your mind. That's what it was. Hmm. What what else is what else is coming this year for Marvel? We got uh, after She-Hulk? Thor. After Thor, we got She Hulk. We have. Wakanda forever in November, mm-hmm. theoretically. Is that it? There's got to be one more thing, right? That's. I mean, that's in a my lot, immediate memory. Yeah. I, I I know that's a lot, but that's not a lot for Marvel. Uh, <laughs> is Into the Spider Verse two this year or yeah. is it next year? Um, uh, I'm not sure. Um. Let's see. Okay, so Miss Miss Marvel's June eighth, Thor's July eighth, She Hulk is August. Mm-hmm. Untitled Halloween special for Disney Plus. Hmm. Interesting. Zombies? Black, question mark. Uh, Black Panther is November. Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special for Disney Plus in December. Oh, ho- okay. Interesting. And then next year, Ant Man is in February. Guardians three is in May. Three. I thought that was. At the end of this year, uh, they pushed it because they want the holiday special to come out first. Kind they swapped fair. it with Wakanda Forever. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, 
There's a lot of... Oh, my gosh. There's so much. This list is like... Oh, my gosh. Oh, by the way, can we talk about Daredevil? Daredevil's coming back somehow. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. They said it's a continuation. I still need to watch the first show. No, oh, it's so good. Dude, the first season I, is so good. The second... I've heard. So, the second and third season... The second season's okay, the third scene is the third season is better, but they had already announced that that was the end of the Marvel shows when they put it out. So everybody was like, mm, "I don't really care." But like, yeah. I would watch season. I would watch all of Daredevil and the Defenders. Um, I think those are worth watching. Jessica Jones season one is also worth watching, which she is rumored to be in She Hulk. So Kristen Ritter. So, I don't know. It might be worth a watch, those Netflix Marvel shows, if they're going to try to incorporate them into the, in the MCU. But Daredevil is brutal, though. They show you fists. You guys like Shang-Chi? I mean, to cut I you did. off, but before the thought moved yeah. my head. I did, but I'm biased because I'm half Chinese, so as soon as I caught wind that this was even happening, I flipped the fuck out. I'm like... <gasps> Listen to me. When you, you had, okay, so someone told me it was basically like a kung fu film, but Marvel, I was like, I'm in. I'm like, I don't care, wh- I don't care who's in it. I'm like, you had me at kung fu and Marvel. I'm like, yeah. I'm like I, don't, I don't care what anyone says. I love a good, who doesn't love a kung fu film? Let's be honest yeah. here. Great martial arts. Yeah. Yep. Um, obviously for me personally, like Asian representation, finally. Mm-hmm. And the main character, um, he's in oh, one of my favorite favorite sitcoms kim's convenience mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's what I'm like, actually... netflix yes he's from there so i've all, i've been a fan of him so as soon as i noticed he was casted for shang chi i'm like i need to see this i didn't know who he was i knew he was from that tv show i actually downloaded his audiobook and i've been listening to his book he just released about his life and growing up and it's a it, it, it was a tough life it was a really tough life so it was it's been really it, interesting to read his 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 parents stories his grandparents stories and his story about coming to like canada and america and all that and it really made me like appreciate the movie a bit more like this dude has struggled so much and now he's like a superhero and it's really cool so but i but like shang chi was again kung fu meets marvel i mean that movie that movie was a lot better than i thought it was going to be for facts yeah the bus scene, like I was sold at the bus the, scene. Yes, the bus scene. I'm like, this has yes. Jackie Chan vibes all over. Yeah, it. yeah. I, I bet Jackie Chan shows up in whatever they do next with Shang Chi as like. A, I, please. I said the same thing. I'm like, I bet you anything. Because I'm like they like, always try to get Jackie like Jackie Chan is gonna be like a cameo or like a main character in number two where he teaches Shang Chi some shit. I'm yeah. like, I would flip out. I if I see Jackie Chan in a Marvel film yeah. as a MCU character, oh, I would scream. Yeah. Yep. I I just like <laughs> I think it would be really cool. I think I think like I don't know. I I just I just feel like that would be something Marvel would try to do, right? Is try to get like a big name, especially because like Jackie Chan. Or like, like It Man or like Jet Li, someone. Someone. <sighs> Yeah. Well, isn't Jet Li, like, really sick? Wasn't that... It, yeah, I think he's, like, really sick. Oh, my God. Uh, because that's, like... Uh, <laughs> side tangent. The uh, Expendables 4 was announced recently. and They're still he, making those films. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. Uh, but he, he was, like, a staple of that series, and he's not in this one. And everybody was asking why. I think he's, like, really sick. Oh, my God, that's terrible. Yeah, cause... Oh, here, let me see. Internets. He was in, like, the first three, right? I think I've only seen the first two. Yeah. Uh, he has hyperthyroidism and has been dealing with issue. And in 2016, he stated that he recovered from his illness and accepting fewer film offers due to his charity work and not because of his health conditions, I guess. Oh. Well, either way, just any... All the best living, Any living legend, martial arts legend, I just really wish mm-hmm. he would show up. I know, I know. Just, just give me like Man Chan and 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 Shang Chi, and I'll just I'll squeal. Yeah. That's all I talk. 
Oh, one of them. Matter. One of them will be the teacher, and one of them will be the villain. Ooh. Oh God! It yes. has the villain. Chan, the teacher. Give it to me, Marvel, please. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, man. Sorry, not to go tangent to tangent, but it's like kind of related. Since you're a martial arts fan, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. Have you played uh, Sifu? No, but it looks so good. You need to. It's a great I've... game. I watched it and it basically looks like like a kung fu film, like an like an old eighties kung fu film. It is, and the fighting mechanics and everything is a lot of fun. Yeah, I've seen it, and I'm like, this is something I could just spend hours on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to plug in my laptop. Yeah, that'd be bad. Um, for time. um so question for both you guys, uh, or, or I guess more Corey, do you have? So, do you have the Nintendo podcast as well? Yeah. Are you on that as well, Stephanie? I am only a guest when needed, but I'm not a okay. regular. Because I was going to say, I see the Hylian Shield behind you. Oh, yes. Zelda. I was, was is... going to say, are you guys uh, ready for Breath of the Wild 2? <sighs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I saw the sparkle in, in your eye, and I was like, okay, well, she's definitely... Yeah. <laughs> well, well, quick history. Sorry, Corey, I'm going to cut you off here, because nope, Zelda's fine. my thing. Even though I know... Okay. Zelda's my first beloved franchise. Um, and that shield actually belongs to my son, because he has been Link for the last three Halloweens. Oh, your son's cool. cool yeah, and I was I was Fi or Fee, so because I've been like Zelda, Zelda, and I'm like, I don't want to be Zelda again. So I'm like, I'm going to be Fi or Fee. So I was Fee, and he was Link. Anyway, so... Uh, has he been a different Link or the same Link? He's been the same Link, but it's just because, you know, he doesn't know the difference and I That's can't fair. afford all that, but yeah. we'll get there. Um, should dye his hair pink one. next year. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bunny costume. I don't know. Um... But the point is, that's how I got connected with Nintendo Power Block and, and Boss Rush, because during the quarantine, like the real like hardcore quarantine, I'm like, I need something to do while I'm stuck locked locked at, down. And I never listened to podcasts before, so I'm like, oh, what do I like? I like Zelda. So I typed in Zelda, and I found another Zelda podcast, but I also found Nintendo Power Block. And then I became a fan. Then I became a writer for the show. And then I became Ooh. a guest on the show. So that, sorry, that's the only kind of tangent I wanted to tie into it. I'm a huge Zelda mm. fan, and that's what connected me to the Boss Rush family. Go, Corey. Sorry. Uh, I, I, my, what I was going to say is not anywhere near as important as that. Uh, but Ed and I are prepping. Uh, episode 300 is going to be a two-parter. And the first part is going to be like Ed and I kind of reminiscing about the last seven years or so about the show and we're doing our top 30 nintendo games oh that's hard i know uh whoa well our original idea and i i just don't know if we have enough time we have what four and a half weeks until we record the first part uh But my idea was to get everybody within boss rush and fans and stuff to write in their favorite Nintendo games, and then just come up, uh, compile a list of 300 games that we all love that have appeared on Nintendo platforms. That's that's cool. That's I was gonna say, how how could you say that's not important, Corey? 300. That's a huge milestone. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, yeah, but yours is you have a cooler story. Uh, also, we Ed and I have been talking about episode 300 for like five weeks now, and it's just like I feel like all I've been talking about lately is that. Um, well, so. since you brought up Breath of the Wild 2, Andre, what is your, do you have your own personal prediction about, do you, I know it's been delayed till 2023, fine, whatever, I accept it, we accept it, do you think they'll actually provide either the title or just a full trailer at this, whatever will replace E3, if they do a direct in the summertime, or, Summer Game yeah. Fest. <laughs> Listen, um... E3, if you're watching and you don't give me a title, I will scream. I I, I, I need to know the title of this. Of the, I don't even. I could. I ugh, Breath of the Wild too. Like I I I at least need like a firm date and a title so I can sleep. All I need. Yeah. All I, I want. I a just title and a date. <laughs> I want a title and a cool trailer. Is what I want. Give me the. Give me a title. Give me a date. Give me the cover art. Mm-hmm. All I ask. All I ask. 
Yeah. Or like five minutes of gameplay of like the beginning of the game. It's it. Oh, I need I need something. So I need like a drip feed of just like that I can just kind of like hold on to because I am going like I've watched the trailer a thousand times. I don't know what else I can do. I have watched many Breath of the Wild things just to get my fix for Zelda. There's only so much I can do. I need more. Okay, Nintendo. Yeah, what what my my fear is that because they only recently said that only recently announced their latest pushback like it's going to be next year i think it's going to be a spring release like march ish 2023 and mm. because of that they'll probably only really give us a lot of information up to six months of that happening so i'm thinking we're not going to get it in the summer but they'll give us something in the fall like a fall direct but i hope i'm wrong but that's my my prediction or i'll just wake up on a random saturday and there will be a trailer true <laughs> oh wake up on a what if and, and, and... Go on, uh, go on. Uh, I was going to say, what if the next time we see something about Zelda is, like, the Game Awards in December? <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Could you imagine just, just... Even then, I'd be like, look, that's all I want. I just, I need, I need something. I need a fix. I, I uh-huh. need something, because I, I... Zelda, for me, like, I, I have the Triforce on my finger. Like, I'm <gasps> huge, huge Zelda fan. I have, I streamed, I streamed and beat the Legend of Orcarina, um... And then I was going to play Twilight Princess on my old PC, but they shipped the bed. Um, I played Orcarina, Wind Waker, Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess. I just recently played the new... Uh, what's the new one that came out? Skyward oh, Sword. Thank you. I played that one for the first time, and that was great. Um, personally, and I might piss some people off, Twilight Princess yes! is my favorite. Only because it's very mature. Mature. <laughs> Sorry, it's nobody very... ever says that, and I got really excited because it's also my it's favorite. A, it's a very like the theme is dark. The, the the sounds are great. The combat's sick as shit. Here's the thing: Twilight Princess has the best dungeons of any Zelda game. Yeah. It, yeah Twilight Princess needs a sequel, and I don't know if I'll ever get that, but I'll die on that hill. And yeah, you have like, a lot of hills to die on today. I do, I do. I, I have a look. I have a lot of death that's upcoming on hills. That's just that's just my life now. But um, no, the dungeons are great. Graphics are great. Stories awesome. The mechanics are dope. Being a wolf is cool. Um, the fight with Ganon at the end mm-hmm. is insane. Um, I will say though, the Skyward Sword fight was was crazy. It was nuts. Yeah, I, I. I have you played it? Me. Stephanie? Yeah. Um, the oh. H which which one? Skyward Sword HD? Yeah, yeah, the one that just came out. Yeah. Sorry. Um I beat Skyward Sword the original release. I did not okay. beat it in H in H D, but I'm fine. I assume it's I assume it's the same ending. Yeah, it's the it's the same. Oh okay, well yeah, like at the end where you like run up his leg, spin, thunder, sword, and then jab into head, I was like Ooh! when that happened and i was like this is so sick very but, yeah. satisfying oh so satisfying very but, um, very wind waker-esque very that was that was the first time that happened and i was like let's go but um yeah tw- I, just something about twilight princess for me is just it's so cool but i mean breath of the wild is just i mean i don't even know where to start like i'm still seeing videos of breath of the wild and people finding shit and i'm like Mm -hmm. this game is so old and still 80 bucks for a reason like it's so (laughs) good oh you have those canadian dollars i was like 80 (laughs) dollars yeah our shit is way more our shit's way worse (laughs) Uh, but um uh the only thing i have never done in breath of the wild is i didn't do the master sword stuff so like the the uh the three like the test of courage strength and wisdom other than that like i i found all the shrines um if you're listening or watching and you have found all 900 Korok seeds, I bow to you because I did not have that much time. No. Place. I did. What? <laughs> did you? Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. You are a, are a human. You are a <laughs> full-fledged human. That takes patience. That takes skill. You are a father. So that is impressive as shit. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have any kids when I did it, though. I'm going to oh, okay. throw that okay. out there. So that, yeah, that's fair. But still. 900 of those things i mean like it was awful 
Golf clap, sir. Golf clap. I yeah, think I. I think I found about four hundred of them on my own, and then after I beat the game, I was like, you know what? Let's go find all these suckers. And I found a map, and it was like an interactive map, and you could like check off the ones that you found. Well, oh, that probably made it a lot helpful. Yeah. Well, it was, but I had to figure out which ones I had first, <laughs> which, oh. which was not great. So, uh, but yeah, I got my little golden poo trophy. Very exciting. Nice. What do you get for it? You, you get like a simple like it's trophy. It, it's a it's a golden it's it's a trophy, but it's a golden piece of poop. It's like a piece of it, it's just it's just uh. like yeah, it's like a big joke. They make a big joke out of it too. Hold on. Uh, how'd you how'd you feel after you uh, after you did that? I mean, I I knew about it before I went hunting for them, but uh, I just I want to find the. Uh, See, I'm con- I'm conflicted because as a Zelda fan, uh, that's probably the franchise that I would most love to 100%. But 100%ing Breath of the Wild, I'm like, I am a, a, a full-time working single mom. I cannot do it if I wanted to. <laughs> no, that is, I mean, for anyone that has, I'm up. I, mm-hmm. that, I, I don't know how you manage to 100% that game, but... You ha- you are more of a Zelda fan than I am because that takes patience, skill, time, and tactical precision on where to find everything. Like yeah. I have a friend who's trying to get all the pictures in the camera, and I'm like I'm like, dude, good luck because you, you the, every animal, weapon, berry, like everything. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my god, I did nope. that too. <laughs> oh my dude. god, what? Uh, what? It, you don't get a hundred percent in the game. Where it's where it tells you your uh, per- percentage completed, you don't get a hundred percent unless you take all the pictures. And then I found out after I took all the pictures, there's a point where you can go somewhere and just purchase the pictures with rupees. Uh, and I was like, oh well, that sucks. Uh, but yeah, the the golden poo. It's uh, it's called it's called Hestu's gift, a gift of friendship given to you by Hestu. It smells pretty bad. And it's just a golden poo trophy. Yeah. So to get back on the on the reason I asked you guys this, do you have any predictions on what two is about, or like from the trailers, like how do you feel about it so far? Oh man, there's there's time travel involved for sure. Um, I think that time travel is going to play a big a big part in it. I mm. kind of hope that you actually switch between Link and Zelda. Um. I also hope that the Wolf Link Amiibo still works in it so I can have a companion. Uh, Because that's, like, secretly the best part of that entire game. Uh, Man, I don't don't know. That last trailer gave me some new thoughts that I kind of have to think about, like uh, the Master Sword dissolving, uh, Mm -hmm. which, which, A... Okay, so you're going to have to kind of find the pieces to put the Master Sword back together, which I was like, well, my original thought was, well, if you start out with the Master Sword, I think something's going to happen to the Master Sword and you get the White Sword from Zelda 1. Um, Ooh, okay. And that's going to be your powerful sword for this game. Uh, I also have a theory that there's going to be crafting to craft... Uh, stronger weapons and each dungeon is going to have an unbreakable version of a weapon because they're going to bring I hope this game brings back dungeons Mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah I think that was the biggest criticism of this game is like it's so great it's so open you can kind of do whatever you want but the there weren't any traditional dungeons and the divine beasts they were cool but they weren't they didn't satisfy the dungeon part of zelda no right and it wouldn't make sense for them to do that again, like the same thing again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think traditional dungeons are coming back. Uh, well, maybe not the way we think of traditional dungeons, but I think they are going to bring dungeons back. And I think the renting system is going to come into play from A Link Between Worlds, where like, if you want to go tackle this dungeon and you need a weapon and you don't have one, you can go find one and rent it. Uh, but also, th- I think there's going to be unbreakable weapons in these dungeons because i know so many people did not care for the breakable weapons oh yeah they were kind of like 
I don't want to say a joke, but like it was, it was, it sucked that everything broke in the game. Mm-hmm. Even the Hylian shield breaks at some point. I was oh, so I upset. It. Yeah, yeah, the Hylian shield and the Master Sword both break, and I'm like, well, I'm not Link then because I can't keep this shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I also think the hook shot is going to make a grand return. Ooh, that'd be nice. Ooh, I hope so. Me. I hope so. Not that I like didn't care about climbing everything, but a hook shot would have made traveling a lot easier. Oh, be great. boomerang. The bo- Ooh, okay. The boomerang. Gale, no, the gale. Oh, boomerang. the gale boomerang. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I just to piggyback on what you said. I'd love to see his like old items come back, like his like his iconic the hook shot, the, you know, the yeah. boomerang, but like his iconic stuff come back. I'd really like to see that. But yeah, I wonder if anything like the, I don't know, I I. I wonder if we're going to start seeing more things from the from past games in here, too. Uh, I know there's, like, locations that you can kind of piece together of, like, oh, this was this was the altar in Skyward Sword. This was the farm from Ocarina of Time, that kind of stuff. But I wonder if some other things are going to start popping in. Well, okay, so, again, to piggyback off what you said. Now, if they have that in the first game and they bring back time travel, can I go to... The, the farm from Orcarina and time travel back and somehow get like a remastered Orcarina of Time farm in some way, shape, or form and get to see Epona, but only see Epona there and then time travel back to the future. I mean, like you, get, the... you can get Epona in Breath of the Wild. Oh, yeah. You have the amiibo? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. You covered a lot of what we could be seeing um the only thing i could possibly add is you know my guess if this were to be a trilogy if right Mm -hmm. i can see this kind of being not when i say majora's mask ish i just mean the darker tone Mm -hmm. a little more sinister tone and it might even Mm. not have a happy ending so to speak well it could be very vague but it could be the empire strikes back of this zelda trilogy right where like you lose at the end you could lose at the end yeah. I want that in a Zelda game because I don't think we've ever had like like Link a- actually just getting like his ass kicked and then just losing in the end, That's how it ends, and yeah. then and then banishing Link. Like, give me a Zelda game where you know you hype us up until like the very end, and then like you fight Ganon, and Ganon's like, "Get out of here," and like he just like yeets you, and then the start of the the start of the of the quote third game. You have to basically pull like a Samus Aaron and like reacquire your shit and like almost prove yourself to the Master Sword that you are the hero. Like you have to be like, listen, like I need your help. And the, and the Master Sword is like, why should I help you? Like you, you know, you got your butt beaten and you have to be like, I can prove to you I'm the hero of time. And Link calls himself and he takes up the mantle of the hero of time and he's like i have to be i have to do this for the world and he has to prove to the master sword that he is the hero it needs and at some point in the game he put he basically pulls like he-man and like <laughs> the sword is, and like him and the sword become one and then like you you like pick up the shield and for, and for some odd reason he's wearing green clothes and 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 Zelda's lullaby is like playing in the background, and there's pigeons. And I don't know where I'm going with this, but I just need that game in my life. <laughs> to piggyback off what you said, I was thinking like, what if the at the end, like you said, like Link, what if Link dies and he wakes up in this alternate world, like like Majora's Mask or Link's Awakening, Funny. and uh, dies or needs to retreat to another, yeah. Yeah, and then like you Ooh. like you play through like the first maybe like the first third of the third game, you play through and you try to get your life back or travel back to the realm of the living. Yeah, like like say for example in the third game, the first like five minute is a Ganondorf fight and you lose and you get banished into like some halfway across the halfway across the world and the game is about you 
venturing into different world dimensions, planes, mm-hmm. whatever, to get back to Ganondorf. And by the time you're at Ganondorf, you're Link, but you're not really Link anymore because you've acquired so much new powers and like knowledge that like you're like, I'm not who you think I am. Dead. Nintendo, sign me up. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> free free the... ideas right here. I got, I, yeah. got, I got this in the bank. <laughs> I've thought about this long and hard daily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Zelda. I know, just... Honestly, a, 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 a timeless classic. But um, speaking of uh, of Nintendo, have you guys played Metroid... Is it Prime? No. Dread? Dread. The... Dread, thank you, Dread. Yes, I actually beat it, shockingly. It I did, great. too. What a great ending. Great yes. ending. Corey, have you? I've gotten lost about 400 times, and I have put it down because I think I am, like, not even a third of the way through the game, and I just keep running around. Which color, which color Emmy are you at? Uh, well, I'm in the water area. Oof, that's tough. Oh, yeah. yeah that's where I'm Emmys at. terrify me, by the way. Emmys are yeah. scary. Yeah. yeah. There is nothing scarier than an an Emmy spotting you and chasing you. If you, I mean, oh, if yeah. you ever want to talk Metroid, LeRon is the person to talk about Metroid with. Oh, okay. Metroid. Give me a Metroid Prime remake from the GameCube. Give me that all well, day. You're all, all day. probably going to get one this fall. That's the rumor. All day. Metroid 4. Nintendo. Listen, <laughs> it's been too long. Okay. Dread was cool. I loved it. I want to see it on the. I want to see a bigger one. Okay. <laughs> Before. Give us four. All of us in the world for it, please. Uh, the, the fun fact about me is, believe it or not, Metroid Dread is my first Metroid game. I just wow. like, I just happened to not get into that franchise. And at first, the difficulty for the, uh, at least with regard to like the Emmy, was frustrating. Mm. But I, I just love that that type of game. You know, Metroid, Metroidvanias. Uh, mm. But um, and also just it was such a visually stunning game. It was so good. And the, the an animations, like, right when you're about to start a boss fight, mm-hmm. it just blew my mind. I'm like... I like how it all kind of, um... It was, like, one continuous shot into a boss fight. Yeah. And then, like, even, like, the boss... Like, the boss intro, the fight, and the end was all, like, one shot. There was never no cutscene. It was so yeah. cool. The crate fight was cool. Yeah. and uh it was just very epic the the epicness of what you're uh, of each battle it, it's worth like dying over and over again for mm-hmm. me but i will i will admit that i got lost a lot so Corey, you're not alone i i did have to look up a couple points because i just did not know when i was running in circles yeah i did too i'm not even gonna attempt to say i didn't that game is really you can get lost fast mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah uh yeah well, I've been playing and watching things. <laughs> what have you been playing and watching? Uh, so yeah, I played the I played Destiny uh, last night. I played through the first mission and tried to do some other things. Although I'm like, I'm like cleaning up my office. I I wouldn't say I'm rearranging it. I'm like just cleaning it up because I've acquired a lot of collectibles in things, and it's time to kind of like put some away. And How's your statue? What? How is your statue? Which one? <laughs> um, did you get the 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 um the witch queen one? Uh, I didn't get the Savathun one. Oh, I thought you did. I want one, but they were sold out when I went to get it. Plus, like, I'm pretty sure if I got that thing, my wife would murder me. <laughs> So, well, it's it's like three feet long because of the wings, and wow. it's like two hundred dollars. So, um, it's a pretty big commitment. I want to eventually, maybe it'll be like a birthday or Christmas gift or something, because they are releasing more in the fall. Uh, but we'll see. But I did get the Cade one, so there's that. Um, that's the one i'm thinking of it was the cade one yeah the stranger one is still the best one the the elsie bray one is still the the best looking one the um oh wait this one is that the one 
Yeah, that Ooh. yeah, that one. Yeah. It's still the best looking one. The Stranger one's not very good. The Eris one is actually pretty good too. Um, but did you they, the company that makes those has been polling the Destiny community to see which character you want next. Yeah. I think I got I think Go either on. Crow or Saladin are next. Both of those would hit hard. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah, especially now with where the story's going. As much yeah. as as much as I want a Zavala one, like I think I think Crow or it depends on what they do with Saladin. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that's. But like, if he if he gets murdered or whatever, if he dies, that's going to be the one. But if he doesn't, then I think the Crow, I think Crow is going to be the next one. Uh, I'll be upset. Yeah, which will be weird <laughs> if they put Crow out after Cade. <laughs> But that's yeah, a, that'd be that'd be a <laughs> yeah. It's awkward. So, it's so funny. People who haven't been playing Destiny for <laughs> so long don't understand, but it's fine. Who's Cade? Yeah, I don't know who can. I like Crow. No, you don't. You don't understand <laughs> no. the pain that we've all went through. Yeah. Uh, the quick version of the story, Stephanie, is mm. the character Crow. He used to be this character named Aldrin Sov, and he murdered, straight up murdered everybody's favorite character in Destiny. And that was like a whole expansion revolved around like, this murder. In cold blood, like saw yeah. him like cold blood. It yeah. Was brutal. Yeah. And the whole expansion was like a, a revenge story. Uh, oh, okay. And then it's not clear who kills Aldrin Sov, but mm. he is resurrected as a guardian. And everybody knows what he did except for him until very recently. But, like, the whole, like, one of the whole story arcs for him was him coming to terms with his old life and leading this new life as a guardian. So, Ooh, spicy. Yeah, it's a very spicy story. Also, he just also committed another murder very recently <laughs> on, <laughs> on accident. What? On Holy accident. Shit, it's are hard to die. <laughs> on accident but he did murder us <laughs> so uh okay yeah he he only wanted to get ramen for god i know he only right. wanted a friend to get ramen with and he, only, he, he murdered this friend. guy <laughs> uh good times destiny is just weird it's fine oh and then on top of that the guy he murdered so obviously dies but then, for his mistake, the good guys had to lose one of their hardest hitters. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, because, because like, there's a race of aliens called the Cabal, and he murdered a Cabal lieutenant. character. Lieutenant. Yeah. And uh, the leader of the Cabal said a life for, basically a life for life, and they were going to straight up kill Crow and then Lord Saladin, which is one of the major players in the story right now, said that he would take his place, and then he became the leader of this faction. It's just this whole thing. It's cool. It's really hard to explain Destiny to people who don't know who these characters it's are. Okay. But it's okay. Really it's fun. like one of those, you had to be there. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. But still. It's fine. Cool. Now, Callus is back, and now... <sighs> I should wait and talk about this on Tower Casuals tomorrow, but they said a legacy raid is coming back this year, and everybody thought it was going to be King's Fall, and now that the Leviathan is back, I'm really worried that it's they're going to bring the Leviathan back, and I do not I've want the Leviathan. Dude, so, it's not. It's not great. I've heard it's not. I've, I heard it's, it's, it's it, not the best. It's, I mean, it was fun, because it was like, oh yeah, new raid, but then you get in there and you're like, hmm. This is every Destiny One raid is better than this, including, oh. <laughs> including, oh including Crota. Oh so, my god! Uh, is, it, is it is it that bad? It after you do it like twice, you go in with your raid team. You're like, why are we doing this again? Like, there, there's no point because they had that really weird token system when that raid came out, where like. You didn't really get gear outright. You had to go some like you had to earn tokens by playing the raid and then go buy the armor and stuff. And like, I mean, you would get drops, but 
then you'd have to trade your tokens in for armor. It was just like this weird thing. It was just, I don't know. That raid left a lot of salty tastes in people's mouths. So, and not the good kind. Um, well, hearing Callus was odd. Yeah, Callus was uh, robot Callus, <laughs> decaying robot Callus, which is who you fight in that raid. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, like that's the thing is like that robot Callus you saw, like it's yeah. uh, that's the boss of the Leviathan raid. And then once you beat him, you go down into this chamber and you just see all these callous robot bodies lining the walls. Like really? So, yeah. It, okay. Okay. I wonder if we're going to see callous this season at all. Like real callous, not robot callous. Uh, but we'll talk destiny tomorrow. Uh, I've also been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Odyssey still. Uh, I've also been on a Star Wars rewatch kick because of Kenobi. Okay, so two things. Number one, Assassin's Creed Black Flag is the best one. Can't change my mind. Number two, Star Wars. Go. I would agree with you on Black Flag until I played Odyssey. I love pirates, so I'm just... (laughs) Are you going to buy... Are you going to buy Skull and Bones? Which is essentially Assassin's Creed Pirates. I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game since the Egyptian one. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that one. Uh, Origins was okay. Origins, Odyssey. that's what it's called, yeah. Odyssey is the best. Uh, that the one with... Um... No, that's the Greek one. Val- Valhalla's the new one. That's what yeah. 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 Uh... But I've been rewatching Star Wars, and I watched the original trilogy, and like my whole thing was like I'm gonna go watch the prequels to prepare for Kenobi, and then I went straight into the sequels. <laughs> and like all this. Stuff. When you're three, yeah, put those to the side for five, six. Yeah, but I have to say, The Force Awakens is great. I stop really lo- just just stop there. <laughs> That's all you had to say. I really like The Force Awakens. Um, I also really like Rogue One, and I also really enjoyed Solo. I don't know why people shit on Solo. I really like Solo. You know why they shit on Solo? Because it's, it's not Harrison Ford. It's not Harrison Ford and Billy <laughs> D. Williams. Donald Glover and Alden Aldrich. Ehrenreich. Yeah, they they did a great job. Yeah, I don't know why everyone's up. Oh my god, I don't know why everyone's up in arms. Like, explain to me why Solo is bad and give me a viable reason, and I might be and I might agree with you. Other than that, stop. Give it's me a solo. A great... Give me a solo Disney Plus show. I'm I'm there for it. I'd back it up. Give me that. Just give me like the Adventures of Han Solo. Give me like three seasons of that where he just Name goes a... on. Name of the show, right there. The Adventures of Han Solo. Name yeah. of the show. Yeah. Right there. Just saying. That would be awesome. And then it leads, like, maybe the last episode leads into the, like, he enters the cantina, right? Where, you know, like, it just leads into that scene. It'd be fine. Give me okay. the story of him doing jobs for Jabba. Give me that. Yeah. Man. I gotta say. I... I'm really scared to go watch the prequels. And, like, I remember really liking The Last Jedi when me and my wife saw it in the movie theater. And then everybody said they hated it. And now, and I haven't watched it since. And I'm, like, really oh. afraid to, like, watch oh. that and Rise of Skywalker. Okay. Okay, wait. Have you seen both? Yeah, I've seen them both. Okay. Last Jedi. I, I, I have such mixed feelings about The Last Jedi. So, for me, the fourth, okay, so like seven, eight, and nine in my opinion, is like a car ride. Seven, okay, so The Force of Vegas it's is like a, a nice, like a nice car ride. Eight, eight is like, uh, it's gonna sound terrible, but hot take. Eight is like a car crash. Eight was, eight had the potential to be good, but there was so much about it that was just random and odd, and that fight scene in the throne, and the in the throne room is terrible. I don't care what you say. If you watch it, a, a, a frame by frame because I I, I don't know if you like, watch if you watch the cut on YouTube where they're playing Queen in the background it gets pretty good. I have seen that and it's good. I've seen that and I I agree that's that's 
it's good. <laughs> but there's just it's the choreography of that fight that I that just kind of like he's like, mm. Mm. um, and then. It, Anyway, um, nine I feel like is trying to walk away from that car crash, but not really hitting the mark. Like it's great. I really like nine. There's tons of things about nine that I enjoy. Uh, but I just like I feel like the, to play off a- the rip when when Poe Dameron's like ever puffing's back. I'm like I'm sorry. What do you mean he's back? I saw Homie get blown up in a giant ball of death. Like. <laughs> six movies ago what do you mean he's, he's alive <laughs> i remember liking nine but i also remember walking away from it thinking this should have been two movies yeah i agree nine should have been split in half and it would have been way better yeah stephanie are you taking notes over there no not notes oh on star wars <laughs> totally not <laughs> Poe Dameron, Oscar Isaac, and for <laughs> Oscar Isaac. I remember him being good looking. Look him up later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm like, I'm really, I don't know. I've been, I, I'm excited for Kenobi because I really like Ewan McGregor as God Obi Wan. My entire being and soul is ready for that. I, I like, I like, I okay, I, I listened to the kenobi audiobook and the um what's the other one there's another one it's called i think jedi masters it's it's basically how qui-gon and obi-wan met Mm -hmm. and their and their whole story before the phantom menace both are great reads but if you read kenobi before watching the show it might you might have more of a a, on you might have more on of an appreciation for the show. I mean, I I will love it regardless. But now that I've listened to that book, mm-hmm. I think there's going to be some more things that I'll be like, holy shit, mm-hmm. holy cow, oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm uh so like I so I'm in the, I'm in this weird point in Star Wars fandom where like I didn't watch the original trilogy like growing up, and I remember mm-hmm. we bought the VHS tapes before Episode One came out. And I remember watching them, like the special editions, and then we saw episode one, and I remember like, I remember liking it, but I felt like there was something off about it, but then like, there's, it's weird, because there's like parts of the original trilogy that I love, but then there's other parts that I hate, but then the prequels, there's parts that I love, and parts that I hate, Mm -hmm. and so like, I feel like as a Star Wars fan, I'm in this weird spot where, like, I kind of like both, and I kind of like the new ones. So does that make me... Like, I I think about it often, where, like, I'm not the typical fan of this thing, I think. Mm-hmm. I think I'm just allowed to like Star Wars, or even, like, Marvel, or whatever else, you know? Like, I, I don't know. You know You're I mean? allowed to Every... like what you like. Yeah. Of course. Every Star Wars film has a flaw and has has pros and cons that's just my opinion every star wars film no star wars film is perfect except for maybe like episode three but that's just, <laughs> just because it's like so emotional in every way um but yeah every every star wars film and tv show has pros and cons mm-hmm. but um i just find lately the star wars community is, is like a little toxic when it comes to opinions Yes, thank you. I was just gonna say that. It's... Yeah, no, it is. It, it's gotten it's gotten pretty bad. Like, I don't know if you guys have watched Book of the uh, Book of Boba Fett, but um, when they introduced Cad Bane and the freaking internet blew up, and they're like, "Oh my god, he's not blue enough!" And I'm like, "Who gives <laughs> a shit? Like, we got Cad Bane in in IRL. Like, shut up." And then when yeah. and then when Kenobi trailer came out, "Oh my god, the Grand Inquisitor doesn't look the same." Yeah, cause we, cause we're comparing animation to real life. Like, what do you want? Like, what? what I just what? I remember so when uh, Mandalorian season two happened, and like you see the X wing fly in, and then you see the green lightsaber, and you just see him like going through murdering people, and he lifts his head, hood, out. hood down, and it's and it's Luke. It's like young Luke, and like yeah, I of out. course I was like, oh my god, I'm like, of course he's not gonna look 
like perfect because it's CG, or whatever. But like it's Luke. Like this is exciting. This is cool. Right. And then you, the first thing you get on Twitter is like, no, oh, Luke looks like a CGI fuckfest or whatever. And it's like, yeah, come on, well, guys. How old is Mark Hamill? Do you think Mark Hamill's gonna do what that person did? Like, no. Right. Now, granted, no. Luke in Book of Boba Fett looked way better, but he did. They hired the deep fake guys to do it. So, yeah, and I and I think Mark Hamill read the lines. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. So, but like, just like to piggyback off what you said, like the last time we saw black cloak, hood, green saber, Luke Skywalker was Episode Six. So the fact that we got the X wing, R two F and D two, and that Luke Skywalker in a TV show, I mean, like, I don't know about everyone else, but I was screaming when I saw the X-Wing. Yeah. And then when I saw the the, the Green Saber, I was just like, yeah. oh, God. I was I was taken back. And, 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 and the fact that people were shat on it, I'm yeah. like, well, like, what do you people want? Do you want Mark Hamill to de-age himself IRL and then play Luke? Because I would love that, but that won't happen. So we got, we also, got what we got. Yeah, this also, this level of expectations ridiculous. Yeah. It is. Uh, also, like, seeing Ahsoka and Luke talk to each other was, like... That was cool. It was super cool. I love Rosario was, Dawson in that role. She was... I was... Okay, so when she got um, casted as her, I didn't quite... I didn't hate it. I just didn't know how I'd feel. I'm like, okay, this is interesting, because Ashley Eckstein killed it. Ashley Eckstein was my... Ahsoka rose to be one of my favorite characters, mm-hmm. and Ashley Eckstein reinforced that. So when... Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me. So when Rosario Dawson got casted, I'm like, okay, you have my attention. I'm curious. I don't, I don't hate it, but I'm really interested. Seeing her play Ahsoka, I'm like, I don't think, I, I don't think there, there could have been anyone more fitting. Because mm-hmm. she even said she like she, she researched the shit out of Ahsoka. She, like yeah. she, massive Star Wars fan. Uh, she did her research and she just loved it. And she and, talked and, to they. She talked to what's her face to get her blessing too. Yeah, yeah. She, she she reached to Ashley and she's like, "Can you help me bring this character to life?" So it was. So she she went above and beyond to portray a character to. I don't want to say live up to fans, but to just portray the character the best way she could, and she nailed it. Yeah, she honestly nailed it, and I cannot wait. For her own show, I yeah. honestly cannot wait to see where it t- takes her. Because Rebels was s- such a great show, and then if anyone had read the Ahsoka book mm-hmm. prior to watching Rebels, it only made it way better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm really excited for Kenobi. That's all I can. Yeah. say. that's. I mean, that's like my last thought. I'm like really excited for Kenobi. Did I'm... you watch uh, Clone Wars too? I didn't watch Clone Wars. Okay. Yeah. I should have, but I didn't. I, there's a lot I should have done before Kenobi came out, but I just didn't. Clone Wars was epic. Just if anyone uh, has watched it, they will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Speaking of epic, this was an epic episode. We've been heck yeah. We've been yeah. running for almost two hours. Like this is crazy. This is awesome. Uh, I, we're gonna we're gonna actually wrap it here. But I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening to this episode of the Boss Wars Podcast. Remember, if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, leave a five star review. If you want to support us, head over to Patreon, patreoncom slash Network. Andre, thank you for your time. This episode. Thank a... you for having me. I was quite nervous all day. Actually, okay, fun fact. Actually, so on the way home today, there was actually a um, a transit um, emergency, and the SkyTrain I take home wasn't working, and I, I was stranded at a different SkyTrain, and I was stressing out, and I was like, "Shit, I'm gonna miss the, I'm gonna miss the podcast." And I was gonna <laughs> message you and be like, "Dude, I can't make it." And I was like, oh, my God. And I was like, okay, relax, chill. Mm. I, managed, I managed to get a cab to a different SkyTrain, and I made it home, and I'm really glad I did because I was nervous all day to, like, do this because it's my first podcast, and I just I just didn't know how I would be. But, I mean, once I started talking, it was just kind of like – Dude, you're natural, man. 
man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, I just, I just, I love to just kind of just talk, and 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 it just kind of flowed. So I'm, I'm happy that you guys had me. I am, I am more than excited to go back and listen to this and watch this. Yeah, you, you are more than welcome to come back anytime you want to hang out, talk stuff, like. For, Mate, I am when all you gotta do is shoot me a message and I'll I'll make time. Cool. Yay. Uh where can people find you if you want them to find you? Um on Instagram you can find me at Andre Wilson, all one word, but it's A N N D R E W I L S O N. And then my Twitter is also Andre Wilson, but it's A N D R E underscore W I L S O N Instagram uh, for photography and fitness, and then Twitter for just chatting, games, pop culture, news, um, hanging out. Other than that, um, yeah, that's basically the places you can find me. Cool. Well, I'm really glad you hung out with us tonight. This was this was fun. Uh, Steph- yeah. I've... Oh yeah. So. Um... People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Klimov, K-L-I-M-O-V underscore author. Twitter is more my gaming and writing stuff. Instagram is just pictures of my cat, food, and me not injuring myself on the pole. Um, <laughs> the cat. The it's cat, all, food. All cat. And, all cat. Yep. But, uh, yeah, and, you know, you'll find me here Wednesday nights, uh, but also on After Dark and the an- classic animated Disney movies for Standard Deaf and my articles on BossRush.net. You can find me at I am Corey in HD on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on Nintendo Power Block. You can find me on Standard Definition, our retro nostalgia podcast, which Andre. Yes. Star Wars. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Ideas up here. Star Wars. My my motto from now until forever is Star Wars is life, abbreviated as swill. Swill, swill, and swill. <laughs> swill forever. Uh, you can find me on my Destiny show, Tower Casuals. Uh, check out Expansion Pass, After Dark, all these things. Crossroads sometimes. Check them all out. I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening. And until next time, we love you. Goodbye. Good night. Good night.